Okay, so I purchased this in September 2017 and it's now September 2024. I've done a one year review. I've done a four year review of my experiences using this car, the good, the bad. And now we're here at the seven year review. And one of the most common questions I've received over the years is how much does it cost to maintain and run a car like this? So that's what I'm going to cover specifically in this video. But just remember, I'm based in the UK. So everything that I'm going to mention will be based on UK prices. And also remember that every circumstance is different. So depending on the person, depending on all of the different factors that I'll show you later in this video, I don't want you to take it as an exact figure and like for like comparison to how much it may cost you. Just take it as a general idea of affordability to know if it's either uh, very expensive and you just can't afford all of these prices or if it's manageable and if you're lucky enough, it's very affordable. So take it as an idea or an indication if this is something that you're considering buying that it might be something that you could actually go for or maybe just not decide to do in the end. So I've got a whole bunch of categories I'm going to run through. They're based on UK pricing, so just remember that. And if you have any questions, as always, drop them down below and let's just get straight into it. Okay, so first of all, let's start off with the cost of the Range Rover Velar. Now the prices have changed since the time I purchased this up till now. But in the UK, if you go for the base Villar Model S, that starts at £55,000 roughly, and that's without any other customizations that you may add to it. A fully spec autobiography model peaks around £83,000. So this is by far not a very affordable, very cheap car to buy. It is very premium. So just remember that, and depending on which country you're in, these prices will also vary drastically. The UK, I believe, is in the top five countries where the Villar is actually the cheapest to buy, even though that's quite strange to actually try and fathom that. I think I've read where somewhere like Malaysia, this is actually close to around $350,000. So just look at how incredible the prices could actually go to depending on where you are. So make sure you always do your research and find the prices. And for me in the UK, when I first purchased this, it cost me around 60,000 pounds. Now let's move on to talk a little bit about road tax. Generally the road tax annually for a car like this costs 190 pounds. But if you are susceptible to have the VED, then you have to pay an additional 410 pounds for the first six years, bringing the road tax to 600 pounds per year. Now let's talk a little bit about the MOT. Now for the first three years of a new car, you don't have to pay any MOT. After that point, an MOT will cost roughly around 50 pounds. You can get that directly from Land Rover themselves, or even if you go to any independent garage, then it will roughly cost around the same price. So 50 pound is a very manageable price. So now let's go ahead and talk about the servicing. Now, if you didn't purchase any service plan when you first buy the car, then an ad hoc annual cost for a service is roughly around 270 pounds. But if they do find any issues whilst doing the servicing, then those costs will obviously be independent to you you'll have to go ahead and fix that as part of like the maintenance costs which we'll come to a little bit later so now let's talk a little bit about car insurance now car insurance is one of those factors that has the biggest variation of how much you're going to pay depending on a variety of different factors as you can see on the sidebar here so this is going to be more of a general idea of my personal circumstances depending on you as a person where you live and all of these other factors your car insurance is something that you will have to check for yourself. And if you are interested in getting a Velar, just know that obviously it's not going to be as cheap as someone that gets maybe a smaller car or something that's used and a little bit older. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that I've paid for the car insurance on this. When I first got this in my first year, I paid 1500 pounds and that's with a couple of other named drivers on there as well. So if you are going to be the sole driver, if this is going to be one of your first cars after getting a license, then of course it's going to be much more expensive than that. But someone that's experienced and has many, many years without any like penalties or points on their licenses, any other factor that may involve like the ones listed here can bring that price down. Now, because I've not had any claims made on this, especially for more than five years, then it's brought the price of my car insurance down over time. So after maybe a few years, the last year, I only paid 900 pounds on my car insurance. And that's using a provider that uses no claims discounts year on year. So that's also a very good factor, but I would implore you to go and do your research and find out all the best prices. But it can vary from roughly around the 1000 mark and it could easily go up to the 2000 mark depending on your personal circumstances. 
So depending on the size and type of your engine, a ballpark figure of a full tank could cost around 80 pounds. It could go more than that. It could be less than that. But you also have to take in consideration of how much you're going to drive your car and how often you're going to top up your fuel if that is something you want to really consider. So if you do want to use this for work and you commute every day, then knowing how much a full tank costs will also be quite useful in understanding if that is something that you're going to utilize. And for me, spending about 80 pounds on this, I do get about 400 miles of range on that. So it is pretty decent and that would last me a while. I don't generally drive it every day. So for me, I top up maybe once every five to six weeks, which is more than enough for me. Okay, and so one of the most important questions that you can't really do research on that well before you purchase a car is general maintenance. Now, for general ad hoc or unexpected repairs, this is what's going to catch you out the most. So these costs that I'm going to mention is specifically if you're going to Jaguar Land Rover to get them fixed directly from the manufacturer and not from any third party. Now, if you do find any issue and you take it to their service center to diagnose and repair, then you have to do a 90 pound one-off diagnostics charge for them to just have a look at and try to identify what the root cause is or what's actually happening. And that alone is not that cheap, you know, and that's something you have to consider. But the next cost is something that they don't really mention to you and it's very hard to find. It's their labor costs. Now, they charge 210 pounds per hour for labor costs. So you can imagine how expensive this would be if they spend around five hours trying to fix whatever issue you're having. So one thing that I experienced recently is my battery in the car after around six years went to around 50% capacity and I kept getting some alerts on the dash and I took it to the service center. They said you need to replace the battery. So it seems like a very simple thing. You get a new battery ordered, you change and swap out the old one and you're done. Because they took around three hours in total after doing diagnostics, the total charge that I got around that was close to 950 pounds just to replace the battery. Now that's just one issue that came up. Imagine how much they will charge if you just start finding more and more issues. Maybe you got a chip on the windscreen, you want them to fix it. Maybe you got an issue with the side mirror, they need to replace that part. Any tiny thing, these labor costs are ridiculously expensive. Now I can't speak for the labor costs for other manufacturers, but for the Jaguar Land Rover ones, I feel like going forward, I'm going to try and find more of a third party independent garage that can try to fix this at even less than half the price than that. But the maintenance on this that I've experienced over the last seven years has been very high. So do consider you need to have at least some backup cash in place in case there is any issues. And this is outside of warranty as well. So these are just ad hoc repairs if you don't have any warranty in place. So that's it. These are all the costs covered with how much expensive it is to run a Range Rover Velar. As always, if you have any questions that I haven't covered in any of these categories, then drop them down below. This is probably going to be my last Villar video. I think I'm at the stage now where I'm going to be switching cars very soon. So ask me anything you need to know whilst I do have this. If you did enjoy this and you really like the look of the Villar, then make sure you to like this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you all at the next one. Take care.